Good morning, Deify here, and welcome to Katawa Shoujo. First off, real quick, why am I not continuing Love Life right now? Well, don't worry, it'll come back. I have just kind of run into a game-breaking bug, and I can't move forward in it. So, I'm working closely with Kitty. When it, uh, when it gets fixed, trust me, it'll come back. But I need something in my backlog to, uh, you know, keep up my every other day schedule. And, uh, well, I've been jonesing to play this game again. It's, a uh, kind of an adult, uh, visual novel. But, um, honestly, I really, really like it. This game has almost brought me to tears, and I've been meaning to replay it quite a while. Plus, I mean, yeah, we haven't had enough voice acting since Doki Doki Literature Club. We gotta get the voice acting going on again, and um, honestly, as far as characters go, the characters in this game, I've had like dedicated voices for them since I first played through it. Uh, these characters are some of the most memorable in any game I've ever played, and I think this will be my third playthrough for it, but I haven't played since uh, probably my sophomore year of college, so I think four years. I'm due to replay it. Uh, I don't really know which route we're going to go down first. There are a couple potential routes uh, that you can go, but I think we'll just kind of jump in and see where things take us and uh, hope that, you know, everything works out real well. I will probably be doing um, some strategies to make sure we can easily go back and uh, start routes again, like saving at every choice. It's an important one. But enough of an intro, it's already been two minutes. All, I'm, all the editing I'm gonna need to do is censoring adult content. Let's just jump right in, cause uh, I've got a lot of talking ahead of me. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. I should do one thing really quickly before I start doing that, which is do not capture mouse cursor. <laughs> This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to pre prevent them from numbing in this cold. Ah, just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah, yeah. The note slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. Who's attacking me? No one. We're good. We're safe. H Hisao? You came? A uh, hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never is more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Look, that's us. I'm circling with my mouth, but mouse, but you can't see it. Uh, Iwanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Um, yes, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle, even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are. Out in the cold. Yeah, good one, Hisao. That's, that's a good one right there. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. 
All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You, you see, I wanted to know if you'd go out with me. I stand there, motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. He's out? I reach up to try and to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. He's out! My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. He he's out! The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanako running towards me, all these fade to black. The last thing I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. Oh god, I forgot how well written this game was. <laughs> oh man. This game has weird origin stories. I'm pretty sure that it actually, yeah, Four Leaf Studios came from 4chan, of all places. It was a group collaboration of uh, some people, I want to say, was it on the anime board or the gaming board? Maybe some combination of them, but you, you would not expect this to come from really somewhere's... Well, I won't use any adjectives, but somewhere like 4chan. And I came in expecting this game to be absolutely terrible, really. And um, I was blown away the first time I played through it. I played it in just like a couple days. Just like one or two storylines a day. I was hooked. And these are not short stories either. This is something you dedicate yourself to. So uh, we'll see how my throat does. Obviously, he sows throat. Not doing so good right off the bat. But mine... Hopefully we'll hold up. It was just a little bit better, I would say. And I haven't checked out. There's apparently a beta version of this game that's released, which is even more heart... Wrenching's not even the right word. Just like heart murdering than this one. I'm like, oh man. I'm gonna have to do it sometime. It's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. Really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled and all the get well gifts began to trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. 
For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So, I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I'd go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass. I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is the ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, he sow. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little. Back at him. <laughs> I don't like the structure that sends. Hmm. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, <laughs> contraindications and dosages are listed line after line with cold precisions. Yeah, sounded it out. <laughs> I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life? Every day? I'm afraid that this is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years. What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Oh, please, calm down, he sow. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Gave the dad the doctor voice. Go me. We're off to a rousing start. Calm down? The only way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least, not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I... It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. 
The majority of students live on campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. Looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity! Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one, a special school. That's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active, in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help, in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability? That's what a disability is! I really hate that something so important was decided for me, but what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny, I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway, but no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. And yes, this is a dating simulator about disabled students. Oh look, that's the image I have! Act 1. Life Expectancy. Let me tell you, this, what this game does right is not marginalizing disabilities. Everyone's like a good personality. Oh my gosh, the characterization in this game. Love it. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a whole thing that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but I couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on something about the gate for too long. So I entered through it with a brisk pace and felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. And I believe, welcome to Brown University. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, 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 sorry, it's Yamaku Academy, but I believe all the pictures from it are of Brown University, an American university, Ivy League, question mark? Might be, I don't remember. But I follow this subreddit, and I'm pretty sure it's Brown University, because I'm pretty sure someone said, like, hey, I started attending Brown University, and I needed to get this picture. And they pretty much got their own picture of this, I think. Fun facts. This game has a lot of fun facts about it. Actually, not any that I know of off the top of my head. Those might be the only two. The fact that it came from 4chan, the fact that it's Brown University, but it's fun anyways, trust me. So I walk towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park 
with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh-cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley, even though I t was told this is my new school. In the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. Well, I mean, there are only like eight students here, I'm pretty sure. You don't meet that many characters. <laughs> so yeah, it makes sense. One person per class, right? Everyone gets their own tutor. Makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. Makes me think about hospitals again how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. Uh, you must be Ni... Uh, Niki? Nakai. Ah, so you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom teacher and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yeah, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher's saying. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to the class? And, uh, this is our first option to take a save. We're going to create a new save state. We're going to have a save state at every little decision we have. But I'm glad that in this episode we're actually getting to meet other people. I was a little worried it was going to be all monologuing. You know what? Yeah. New me. Let's introduce myself. Yeah, sure, I mean... Isn't that normal? Yeah, of course, but not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the first one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Alright, let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down, the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Muto opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip. This is a big step, I know that, but there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. Okay, so how many people do we actually have? Four, seven, ten. Okay, so there are ten people here already. I'll tell you right now, she's important. She's not important, but she might be. <laughs> this is Miki. We won't meet Miki for quite a while, but Miki's, Miki's a fun little character. I think I know which route we meet her on. And uh, if I can remember all the decisions, probably not the one we're going to go on, but it's the one that most people default to on their first playthrough. <laughs> I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious, the ceiling is unusually high, and there's a lot of space left over around and in between desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. 
The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. Stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school. But then, why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Oh, we're getting more people. Only it's just not immediately obvious. This girl, oh, you can't see my mouse, that's right. First important girl I said was black hair in the back covering her face. Miki here in the front looking off in every direction with the uh, bandage on her wrist. She's fun. Blue hair, pink hair, very important. Fat guy in the back, not so important. Don't think we ever see him. I like Specs here, I haven't noticed him before. Not bad, Specs. <laughs> and the girl in the back behind blue hair, she looks like the drummer from K-Own. Nice. <laughs> then I noticed that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that's pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. See what I said about the girl covering her face? Important! There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rim of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Uh, please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands, and so does everyone else. Except one girl in the first row who has only one hand. Ah, Miki. You're so good. You're a great character. I wish you were a main character. Might be in the sequel. There are rumors. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hisao Nakai. And after that? Uh, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that? I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more. Something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this, claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandaged stump. It makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you the chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Hakamichi is right there. Shizune Hakamichi? As he calls out her name, the cute bubbly looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her, by the window. Hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have so much fun with her. What? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you too! But, I'm not Hakamichi, I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi, Shichan. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me this whole time. She nods once, nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully neatly brushed hair, 
a pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of a dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think I was Shichan. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter! She says it's nice to meet you too! You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right! <laughs> he seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today so soon! Hichan, right? Hichan? Yup, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. Never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits! You look just like I imagined! <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hee-chan. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hakamichi taps her finger on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Hand motions. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Yeah, thanks, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kinda came straight to class today. <laughs> That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. That smile is great. Always! Even if it's a trip to the convenience store, really? Really? Chi-chan? <laughs> learn about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that. Or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it, half-acidly. But anyway, I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. You look down. Are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking! Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. <laughs> Alright. Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamichi or class rep all the time. Just call her Shichan. Music cut. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Yup, yup, Shizune is fine. <laughs> okay, that would be a lot easier for me. Feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I would feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business. Well, she still seems like that. Just less so. I guess. Huh? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now or Shichan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. <laughs> that too. God, Misha's laugh is so much fun. I, I just wish I could make my voice go even higher, because I can hear it perfectly in my head, but my voice is too masculine for a good Misha. Ugh. If I were actually a good voice actor, it'd be fantastic. Shizune glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. 
After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. And we finish it in time. Earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really care capable. Wow. I wanted to end here, and I mess up the last word I say? Unfortunate. But yeah, this is already bringing back good memories. I'm, I'm very excited for this. I don't think this will be a full playthrough. It might be like Doki Doki where I do one playthrough, but I'm, I think I've determined which playthrough I want to go for. The question is just, do I want my heart ripped out or do I want my heart ripped out and stepped on? Because the ones I'm deciding between are like the two that almost made me cry, so. We'll figure things out as I go along. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this will be long term because I'm really just using this as an intermission until I can get love life back which I'm hoping I don't know why I did the okay sign like yeah let's let's meme it up or something uh, I'm hoping that that'll be sooner rather than later but I'm going to finish one playthrough I've started it I've dedicated myself to it I should at least do that but I'm gonna leave this episode here let me just make sure I save very quickly would not want to mess that up I'm supposed to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Until next time on Katawa Shoujo, goodbye.